The light emitting diode, or simply LED, is a remarkably energy efficient lighting solution that is used for many different things, ranging from the tiniest indicator lights to massive stadium lights. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how the LED actually works. As we just mentioned in the intro, LED stands for light emitting diode, which means that it's a diode that emits light, of course, so it's a special kind of diode. And that's why it's useful to first take a look at how a regular diode works, and then take a look at what the LED does to actually emit light. So a diode is a device with this symbol in electronics uh, that only lets electric current flow through it in one direction. So where a normal light bulb or a resistor or some component like that lets current flow through it in both directions, depending on how you connect the power supply, a diode will only let current flow through it in one direction. So how does a diode manage to do this? Well, this is a schematic drawing of the inside of a diode. A diode consists out of two materials that have been put together, which are a P-type material and an N-type material, which are both semiconductor materials. The P-type material, with the P standing for positive, is manipulated in such a way when it was made that it tends to hold a lower amount of electrons than it should have. So, it has a lack of negative particles inside it, a lack of electrons. That's why in my schematic drawing, I've drawn these, these circles with plus signs in them. Those are basically holes or empty spaces that could be filled by electrons in the future. Right? Maybe that's going to happen. Hint. <laughs> um, but these holes have plus signs in them because they're positive, right? A, play, a place that desperately wants electrons because there's a lack of them is a positive place, after all. Then, right next to that is the N-type material, with the N being negative, which is a material that has been uh, manipulated as well, but now in such a way that it holds a, a, high, a larger amount of electrons than it should. So it has too many of them, too many negative particles. So those are the, the circles with the minuses in them. They're just electrons. Now what happens immediately when this diode rolls off the assembly line, or even sooner, is the electrons that are right near the edge, right near the P-type material, will immediately rush towards these holes and fill them up. So the holes get filled, and this happens only where the two materials meet each other. And when a hole gets filled up by an electron, the electron is stuck in position and the area is now neutral again, uh, which means that in that area, which is drawn purple in this drawing, we get a neutral area. And the problem with this is that that area has no free electrons, right? The, the electrons have filled up the holes. They're in those holes now. They're in position. They don't want to move around, which means this area doesn't conduct electricity, right? Maybe you remember that from physics or chemistry class at some point, materials that don't have free electrons in them that can move around, those are materials that don't conduct electricity. And so this area inside the diode doesn't conduct. Okay. Now, if we connect a power supply to the diode the right way, right, the right way around, that means the positive side of the power supply to the P-type material and the negative side to the N-type material then what we can do is the following. The positive side of a power supply attracts electrons. So the electrons from the n-type side really want to go towards the positive side. So the positive side of our power supply adds a larger amount of holes to the p-type material. At the same time we've got the negative side of our power supply pumping more electrons into the n-type material and these electrons repel each other because they're all negative particles and they also really want to go to the, the p-type material so what will happen eventually if the voltage is high enough the electrons that have uh, occupied the holes in the middle in that purple area they will leave their holes and then all the electrons will start rushing towards the p-type material on the positive side of the power supply and at the same time the positive side of the power supply feeds holes into the p-type material and these holes will be traveling in the in the opposite direction 
and that way we get a current running through this diode where electrons are constantly filling up those holes but because the power supply is turned on this keeps going and going and that's why we've established a, a constant current through the diode the reason it doesn't conduct when we connect it the other way around is because this will happen. The positive side of your power supply will simply start attracting all these electrons which will move towards it. At the same time the negative side of the power supply will start supplying electrons which means these holes, remember, they're all going to line up at the negative side to accept electrons from it and so you're never going to ex uh, establish a current here. In fact, the zone in the middle that is non-conductive will get bigger. Eventually, though, if you apply a high enough voltage, of course, you can simply break the thing and establish a conductive channel right through it. But let's assume you're not doing that. Let's assume for a moment you're not willing to destroy your, your precious diode. So now we know a bit more about diodes. Now we can take a look at the light-emitting diode. So the light-emitting diode makes use of the principle that when an electron fills up a hole, when it uh, settles down in a position, it loses some energy. But of course, energy can't just be gone, as you probably know. Energy needs to be dissipated in some way. So what the electron does to lose its energy is emit a photon, which in normal English means it emits light. So light is emitted by the electrons settling down in those holes. And that's why the diode can emit light. However, then why are not all diodes light emitting diodes, right? Why don't they all emit light? It's because of two main reasons. First of all, there's a very obvious reason, that, which is that not every diode design allows light to escape. If you want your diode to emit to emit light, you will need to design it in such a way that the light can actually escape from it. If your diode is built in such a way that it might generate light but it can't go anywhere, then of course it's not going to work. So you need a so-called translucent diode. You need something from which the, the light can actually escape to the out, to outside. The second reason is that not all semiconductors create the same light. So there are the p-type and the n-type material, which are both semiconductors, but there are many different kinds of p-type and n-type materials that you can actually use. And all these materials will have a different amount of energy released per electron when it fills up a hole, which means that the color of the light that your diode emits also depends on the materials used inside it. And so it is very possible that you use materials uh, which generate light in the infrared spectrum or maybe the ultraviolet spectrum or some other spectrum that we humans are not able to see in which case you've also not really made an LED because it doesn't emit light it emits something else which might be useful in some situation but not exactly light um, and then from there on we can apply all kinds of things so as we discussed we can use different materials to create different colors so we can make red LEDs green LEDs blue LEDs orange LEDs all sorts of sorts of stuff we can combine a green red and blue one onto one thing to make RGB lighting um, if we want to make a white LED we can also do this using a red green and blue one or what we can do is make an ultraviolet LED and then put a phosphor coating on the outside like with a fluorescent light. So what this does is you have an ultraviolet LED, the ultraviolet radiation will hit the coating on the outside and the coating will then turn this ultraviolet radiation into normal visible light. That's also a way of making a white LED. Well anyway that's the basics of how a light emitting diode works. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching.